welcome to Perspectives, where we take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we take a look at people's opinions on such issues. I am Bruce Osime. And I am Ola Terera Majekodumi Oniru. On today's show, we would explore the reversal of cancer. What are the best preventative, conventional and alternative treatments? We have special guests and survivors joining us, so sit, stay tuned while we get started. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. There are few things and certain moments in life that make an indelible mark on us. One such unforgettable event will, be, will include your doctor diagnosing cancer, a disease that many individuals and families are bravely fighting day in and day out. As the month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we have decided to discuss various approaches in treating this disease. Knowledge accessibility has increased in recent years, as has the patient's design, desire sorry, to participate in their health care. This desire is amplified for the cancer patient who is faced with potentially life-threatening news. The desire to try everything and take a chance on what might work is overwhelmingly tempting even for patients with a significant medical background. Treatments that are not used in mainstream medicine may be described as unconventional and non-traditional by mainstream medical doctors. As complementary and alternative medicine called CAM, C -A -M, becomes more popular, it is being used in cancer patients to aid in recovery or to treat symptoms associated with the current chemotherapy. There is a slowly growing range of alternative treatments to chemotherapy that may have fewer risks but they also come with several limitations. Although some patients are highly satisfied with CAM treatment, professional healthcare workers who are medical doctors do not offer CAM because it is not part of the standard conventional medicine. Very well said. There's heart disease and then there's cancer. On the list of the leading causes of deaths worldwide, cancer is a health disaster that significantly reduces the quality of life of those affected. With an annual global count of over 10 million people unable to reverse this deadly disease, it's interesting to note that over 50% of all cancers are actually preventable. Smoking leads to lung cancer. Artificial or excessive skin tanning, lightening or darkening leads to skin cancer. Unhealthy eating, excessive weight gain, excessive alcohol consumption, inactive sedentary lifestyle, and mental stress contribute to many cancers that lead to death. Preventation is the most effective and most affordable form of derailing cancer and enjoying better health. Early detection with smart treatment is the next best form of surviving cancer and thus constant global awareness as with today's show is important. The United Nations Human Development Index, HDI, measures our health through life expectancy, our level of education, and our standard of living, all which combined with factors such as genetics, national policies, insecurity, and inequality encompass additional determinants of cancer risk. Annually, over $1 trillion is lost so the economic cost of the inability to prevent or treat cancers worldwide. Much more will be discussed with our special guests, but first, a unique report on cancer. If there is one disease that has ravaged the world for decades, cancer will top the list. Cancer is a disease in which abnormal cells divide uncontrollably and destroy body tissue. There is no cure for any form of cancer, but there are treatments that may cure you. Many people who are treated for cancer can live out the rest of their lives and die of other causes. While many others are treated for cancer and still die from it, although treatment may give them more time, even years or decades. However, the treatment for this disease is very expensive and can burn a hole in the pockets of the patient. In many parts of the developed world today, Patients with cancer can have access not only to standard medical and surgical care, but also to a wide range of other therapies that are grounded in a more holistic philosophy of health and healing. Complementary and alternative 
holistic, integrative, natural, unorthodox, mind, body, spirit are some of the many names given to a large and varied group of therapies that have become popular in cancer care. There is no doubt that alternative medicine can play important roles in cancer care. Techniques such as acupuncture, aromatherapy, exercise, yoga, massage, meditation, music therapy, and others can greatly improve cancer-related fatigue, pain, mental health, and quality of life when they are added to standard cancer therapy. Taking care of nutrition is also an important aspect of holistic approach towards cancer care. Today on Perspectives, we will be taking a look at the holistic approach towards cancer treatment. How popular is the alternative approach to treating cancer? Can both approaches work in line with each other? You know, it's interesting that um, uh, that headline, holistic approach to cancer treatment. But we have two guests today. One of them tried the holistic approach. The other one tried the conventional approach. So the whole essence of this program today is to compare notes. It's not a question of whether one is better than the other, but what are the disadvantages, what are the benefits, what are the side effects of both of them. And I think I find it interesting because, um, in fact, one of the particular um, guests has had cancer twice, and she tried oh, wow. both um, 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 treatments. So she'll be able to enlighten us more. Absolutely. Because um, Absolutely. I feel that um, it's still the most dreaded disease ever known to man. I have not seen any disease, even AIDS, or any disease that is as... That is widespread. Yes, and that is widespread. And then it's scared. People are scared of cancer. Once you hear mm -hmm. the big C, you mm -hmm. know, you're, you know. Yeah. Some people have even lost their will to fight. Majority of deaths happen within five years. Yes, it's when so they will say, oh, the prognosis is that the chances of five years survival. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, well, five years is not even a lot. So it's even that in lot. itself is scary. It's not a lot, exactly. You know. And so when your mental stress is already suppressed, just from you having so much anxiety and being worried about inevitable death coming, that's part of what makes Well, cancer. I think what the doctors or, you know, modern medicine and the doctors today, like we'll see on air later, what they're trying to do is dis dispel that myth that mm. once you have cancer, it's a death sentence. You know, they're trying to say, you know, create more awareness at the fact that if it's detected early enough, right. you can, you can, can really, you can live a relatively long life, Absolutely. you know. But unfortunately, I don't know whether that has dispelled the general mm. fear of the word cancer. But hopefully... No one wants to be diagnosed with something that yeah, will kill well, them. It's we just, have two survivors that are here today. So, so it's, maybe, it's not necessarily a death sentence. Mm. It's just and about early It seems detection. like it can come back for it to be... <clears> well, yeah. You that's said a, she had it twice, so was it... A she, different one of the guests had it twice. Type of no, she will tell time. us when she comes in. There's no need to. She will tell us okay, when she just, comes in. Just so you know. You... The audience will know when she comes in. She's coming in now, okay. in another five <laughs> minutes or so. So be patient. Okay. You'll get, you get all your questions we'll hear answered. From the guest. Mm -hmm. So we're heading for a short break, but stay with us. Perspectives will return in just a moment. Welcome back to Perspectives here on the Rise News. Christina, Christiana Oredola Williams is a lawyer who did her internship at late KK Shumade Chambers, barristers and solicitors as a solicitor briefly before going into full-time home management as a homemaker. In 1988, she decided to pursue her passion for fashion designing. Shady Fashions Limited came into existence supported by her late husband, Chief Rashid Alaba Williams, who made her dreams possible. In 1988, within three months of its establishment, Shady Fashions Limited was the second runner-up in the Iyogi competition organized by Chief Oprah Benson. As a two-time cancer survivor, William's personal story is one, is one of determination and grit. She has explored both conventional and treatments to treat her ailments. Today, she will share the part of her journey with us and what gave her a new lease of life. And last but not the least, is Eno Essien, who will also be joining us. She's the founder and chief executive officer of RECAC Limited, a vehicle tracking, track, tracking and recovery company established 15 years ago. Under her leadership, the company has consistently experienced steady and remarkable accomplishments and recorded an exceptionally high success rate in recovery of stolen vehicles from locations within and outside the Nigerian boundary. 
and no, is one of the 50 youths from the 22 sub-Saharan African countries featured in the book Hashtag You Can, an anthology of success stories published in Nairobi, Kenya and featured on Elle magazine Italy. Her commitment has earned her several awards locally and internationally. Also, Eno Essien is a breast cancer survivor. She rang the closing bell at the Nigerian Stock Exchange in commemoration of World Cancer Day in February 2020. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. You know, what makes your case quite interesting is that both of you are survivors, but one used conventional and um, traditional alternative treatment, and you used the conventional. conventional treatment. So let's start with uh, Mrs. Williams. You've had cancer twice. Yes. So first and foremost, can you please tell us what it was and what the treatment for both, um, both times were uh, good and morning. why you did it? Good morning, and <coughs> thank you for morning. having me on the show. Thank you. Um, the first... Um, before I go into the, um, the first type of cancer I had was colon. Okay. But I was lucky I had surgery because it was discovered on time. And um, I was also lucky that I was not recommended for chemotherapy Oh. as well. You can be treated without having to go through chemo? Yes. Oh, okay. Because it was, like I said, it was discovered on time. It was nipped on board. What were the symptoms though? Uh, symptoms are indigestion, constipation, and um, loss of headache, feeling very weak, and at times obesity. Okay. Yeah. So, but being a person that do not joke with myself, Okay. I do not joke with my body. Mm. And I go regularly for checkups. Because okay. it's, it's very important that people should go for checkups regularly. And it was discovered on time. So mm. surgery was recommended. I had the surgery done abroad and um, came back. That was in 2011 to 2012, because I was away for one year abroad. Mm. And unfortunately, it came back in 2015. So yeah, within it, three, after three years, it came back? Yes, within the period of two years or so. But not about. the same colon? Not, the, not colon. This time, the second time was in breast, mm. my okay. breast. So, but, so why did you now decide to have um, um, uh, alternative treatment instead of the conventional treatment you had the first time? Yes, there was, there was an experience, there was a testimony concerning my late husband. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. um, when he was about almost 70 years old, at, I think it was about 69 or thereabout, just before he was 70 years. And he was given less than three months to, to live. Wow, that means they discovered it quite late. It was quite late. And it was bad. By the doctor here, Dr. Shonibare, and then he was referred to oncologist abroad, both in the UK and the US. And we went to the UK, we went to the US, both oncologists there, confirmed what Dr. Shonibare said in Nigeria, that he should just go and prepare and sort himself out that there was nothing anybody could do at that period. Wow. So we came back home very dejected. And to the glory of God, a cousin of mine who is into alternative, she's based in Abuja. In fact, she has the first Alleluia clinic in Nigeria. She still mm -hmm. does. She got healed because she had this very bad type of diabetes and she was healed through alternative therapy through the alleluia diets can you program. tell us more about that it's all about it's basically the same thing it's about fruits mm -hmm. changing your lifestyle mm -hmm. you know uh, it, the, the type of food you eat the the, the herbs you use teas nuts mm. and very vegetables so that is basically what Alleluia Diet is all about. And she went into the clinic. Alleluia Diet is an organization established by Americans. Mm. And this particular company, because I recommend it to everyone that is listening right now, um, they're founded by Americans 
who were medical doctors who had history of cancer. This was about, this is a company, we're talking about 18 something, whatever. So it's an old company that has established itself and has proved itself to be very good in the treatment of alternative therapy for cancer patients and for every other, most other ailments, not necessarily cancer. So she was recommended, she was referred to this clinic in Atlanta, Georgia. She went there, she went into the rehab, like it's like a rehab, and she was basically taking off all her, all the foods that she was used mm -hmm. to and introduced to diets mm -hmm. according to her blood group. And, so she was, she, and she stopped the medication she was also taking. Oh yes, all the conventional medications. Mm -hmm. And she came back alive, mm -hmm. and the husband was so excited that she was alive, because mm -hmm. they thought she was going to die, and he set up the clinic for her. So she got to know about what was happening to me. I said, Auntie, no, uncle will not die, I'm mm -hmm. coming. So she came over, she was gracious enough, came from Abuja, flew to Lagos, stayed with us for two weeks, and then introduced my late husband to Alleluia Diet. And we started with carrot juicing, beetroot, what have you. Going back to nature. Yes. <laughs> and then she recommended this uh, champion. You know you have a lot of juicers. Mm -hmm. But there's a particular one called champion juicer. That juice, juicer, we extract 100% of whatever nutrient is contained in any fruit or plants that you use. Mm -hmm. So that started the healing process of my late husband. So while he was doing this too, he too also stopped medication, stopped oh, yes, therapy, he had, stopped he, everything. He, he stopped everything and he stopped eating his normal food. So he was just, for the first, the first three months, he was just on juices, salads, what have you. And to the glory of God, the PSA started dropping. We went to Dr. Shoni Barre. And don't forget that the doctors in the UK and in the US were kept on asking us, we kept on going every three months for about a year. And these doctors that had given up on him, they were shocked at the results. And they were asking him, what did you do differently, Mr. Going Williams? Every three months. Yes. I'm sure a lot of medication. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, yeah, but how long did he live after this, with this approach? How long he, after? He died, he died two years ago at 87. Wow. So, you, so in other words, he had another extra 10 years. Maybe. Yeah, more than 10 years. More than 10 years. Okay. But you, you know, you don't agree with her, her approach. You, you did yours through the conventional um, treatment. And one pertinent question I want to ask, how did you feel when you heard the news? How did it affect you? Because they say you go through certain phases when you hear the news of being, getting cancer. I think denial, anger, mm -hmm. acceptance, blah, blah, blah. So how did you feel when you heard yours? And how old were you at the time that you had um, this? I was 30 when I was diagnosed, and um, it was like a death sentence. So I discovered by myself there were no symptoms. I was okay. It was at a point where everything was doing well, my life, business, awards. It was just a really good point in my life. And then um, I went to Port Harcourt to establish a branch of my business. And that night, as I lay down to sleep, mm -hmm. I put my two hands on my breast and felt the lump. You okay. know, then on checked one on one breast, then checked the other one and um, discovered that there was nothing there. So I stood up and, you know, prior to then I heard about how you would do the checks by yourself, you know. So I stood up and then tried to do the checks and noticed that that one was still there, you know. So I immediately called my mom. My mom is a retired um, nurse, a retired hospital matron. So I called her and um, she's like, there's nothing wrong with you, leave it, you know. So for about, um, I didn't do anything for about six months, even though after noticing the lump, I was in the UK and did um, an ultrasound, which confirmed that they needed to further do a biopsy, you know. I didn't do anything. Eventually, I think about seven months after, I um, went in, did a biopsy, and they discovered it was cancerous. And yes, it was, um, it was like I had been given a death sentence because as at that time, I didn't know people survived cancer. You know, everyone, every story I had heard about cancer, then was this person had cancer and the person died. So it was, I was given a death sentence. I was completely scared. I was completely shattered. I was really, really down below, 
you know. And then um, I, um, about two weeks after, um, I basically held on to the word of God. We have um, a close family friend, a pastor good, you know, who would come to the house and share the word of God. And I realized that um, that was basically, for me, that was like the only option I had. Yes, yeah, so that's how I was able to pick myself up and going for well, treatment. By conventional? The conventional, yes. Can you tell us I had, um, I had, my treatment process was a lumpectomy. I had chemotherapy. What's lumpectomy? Lumpectomy is taking out a portion where the cancer cells are in the breast. Okay. You know, so it's, a, um, I think medically it's called like a breast conservation. I'm not very sure of the term. Mm. You know, so I had the lumpectomy. I had um, chemotherapy. It was six rounds of chemotherapy over a period of five months and then I had radiotherapy 25 rounds of chemotherapy um, over a period of a month so um, then I was on tamoxifen yes I also ask do, do, do you have a history of cancer in your family none that I'm aware of none okay what can mm. you tell us about your standard of health since you were cured from cancer well, what changes have you made? Have you witnessed any relapses? Even, no, no relapses. I've been absolutely fine. I go for my um, checkups every year and um, okay. it's been amazing. I've been given the all clear, you know, and um, I, ha I worked on my diet. Yes, I did change my diet, even at the point where when I was diagnosed, you know, had to do the juicing, mm -hmm. had to eat healthier, had to cut off the sugars and all of those things. You know, so how long have you been in remission now? Ten all. years. Ten years. I'm, I'm ten years cancer free. Okay, I want to ask you, Mrs. Williams. <clears throat> as as she says, to even hear the news of that you have cancer is devastating. And I've been told that some people even lose the will to fight, and sometimes you're losing your will to fight also hastens your your you, you dying from it. Yeah. So for someone like you, uh, Mrs. Williams, whose husband had cancer. You also had cancer, and then you now got the news back. What motivated, what motivated you to continue with your fight? What inspired you? How were you emotionally and mentally during this period? And also, second, um, secondly, how long was your treatment when you decided to go the, um, alter, use alternative treatment? How long was it for before you went into remission? I think uh, I haven't had it the first time. The first time, of course, it was like a death sentence. But I haven't gotten over that. And, um, and it coming back the second time, somehow I wasn't um, scared. Maybe the, 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 the fact that I survived the first one kind of gave me a flip. And the fact that my husband survived it through the alternative way. Mm. So I think the Lord reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, I didn't panic. I just went back to the Lord in prayers okay. to lead me to do the right thing. And like she said, like, like, my, like my, she said, my mother too, like her, my, mother too, my, mo my late mother was a, a nurse and a matron. Okay. So I went back to my mother, spoke to her, and then she said, you know, you're a very prayerful person. My daughter just go as the Lord leads you. So I prayed. But like her, did you have any history of cancer in your family? I, I, don't, I don't know that I know of, okay. you know. And um, although my, my younger sister later died of cancer. Oh, this, okay. Yes. So younger the, that, sister. My younger sister, yes, my wow. baby sister, late Stephen Kesh's wife, who know she died of cancer. Oh, so she that means my, it was, it was, was in my, your family. Yes, maybe. I don't know. She was, so by the time it came back the second time, she was already dying of that cancer. Oh. I had just returned from the U.S. And I saw the effects of chemotherapy on her. Oh. So it was like, this thing is back again. And I've just seen Kate, and there's no way Kate can survive this from what I saw. I am not going to go this way. I'm going to go the way of my late husband. So I prayed, and the Lord said, now it was for me to get the, the right doctor that would put me on that part of alternative therapy. Absolutely. I think we all agree that diet is a big part yes. in preventing or treating, curing cancer. Yes. And... Vegan lifestyle, having fruits and vegetables, very important. What are those factors that actually have to be removed from your diet in order for you to be able to cure cancer? For instance, processed meats, red meat. Mm -hmm. What were some things doctors or even your alternative medical advice or advice that you must take out of your diet? Well, he was not in a position to tell me what to eat and what not to eat. I was already in the knowledge, because mm. that is where 
I say that knowledge, ignorance is mm -hmm. part of the problem mm -hmm. that is causing a lot of these health issues mm -hmm. amongst people. Because people are not informed of what they should do. And they are not even prepared to, to, to find out what they should do. They just mm -hmm. resort to fear and panic, mm -hmm. which is not also good. Yeah, but there are also those who mm -hmm. swear yes. by conventional medicine. <coughs> they swear yeah. by conventional medicine. Yes, I but know. But she wants to get into the alternative, the yes, diet, I the things she removes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not really the doctors that will tell you, you have to... First of all, go for a test for you to know the blood group that you belong to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before the doctors will not. Not many doctors know the fact that you have to eat according to your diet anyway. Mm -hmm. The people are just beginning to know about <coughs> that. I knew that I, I needed to eat according to my blood group because I was already told that when I went, when I had my, um, my first uh, surgery in India, because I actually had the surgery in India, and I was told by a nurse who was trying to be a friend to me, to uh, yes. Mm. She mentioned it, that was how I knew. Mm. And I went to research and I found that there's a book, there's usually a book written on it by a Nigerian. Oh wow. Mm. You know, it's a lecturer at the University of Benin, you know. And I, somebody got me the book and I looked at it. So it's not different groups, uh, blood groups tolerate different things. Mm. Mm -hmm. For That's some, for a lot of people, red meat, yes, is, is, a, is a no go area. Mm -hmm. But for those who belong to Blood, blood, blood group. Oh, they need red meat. Oh wow! So it's based on okay, uh, you know. Blood that, group. So, That's so it doesn't follow. But, so it mm. depends on your own blood group. And yeah. go on, finish your. Yes, and um, the second question was no. Some some would argue that delaying surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or other traditional treatments by using alternative therapy can allow the cancer to grow and spread to other parts of the body. So with this in mind, do you accept that your preferred approach might not necessarily work for everyone? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It cannot like work for everyone. Mm -hmm. The fact that it worked for me doesn't mean it worked mm -hmm. for, for her. Mm -hmm. Like Just like she said, she mm -hmm. went to the conventional method, mm -hmm. and today she's here. She's completely cancer-free. Well, and what's your, what's your take on, on um, alternative medicine? Well, I'm actually not for alternative medicine, and the reason is... Um, there's, you're doing something, there's a winning team, I'd rather stick with the winning team or the winning procedure. You know, when I went in for, when I had the surgery in the UK, my treatment was in the UK, uh -huh. we weren't going to do chemotherapy. And the reason was because the information my family and I had was chemotherapy kills. Mm -hmm. That's like the popular information, you know. So um, we did the surgery, we we're planning to come back to Nigeria. And then I had, um, I had a swelling, so I had to go back to the hospital for, to be drained mm -hmm. and then they asked so when does your chemo start and i said i'm not having chemo and they were like why i said because i don't want to die you know so at that point we were educated we were all sat the um, breast nurses and we were educated on what chemo is and how it works and i was encouraged to take it you know and um i'm glad i took it and whenever i meet people it's the same because it worked for me and i can only speak on what worked mm -hmm. for me um she will speak on what worked for me. Wow. i mean it's like that for everyone but it worked for me earlier on you had mentioned something about um the response fear is mm -hmm. um a very strong factor you know i for me there were two options do i am i going to sit down in fear and wait to die or am i going to stand up trust in the word of god and then receive treatment mm -hmm. i usually say that my healing was from god through medicine mm -hmm. you know so that's what worked for me and i would only advise um, what worked for me okay some also say the emotional impact of um, cancer diagnosis the mental emotional impact does not crop up until six months to a year after, that you might have fully recovered, but your mental health is, is, is still not at par with your physical mm. recovery. So how did you feel? How, how long did it take for both of you to get back to your normal selves, supposedly? Well, um, during the course of retreatment, we were always told you have to live a normal life. But um, emotionally, um, I would say that the whole treatment made me really emotional. In fact, up until two years ago, every time I would go to the hospital, as soon as we're driving into that mm. neighborhood, my whole body system, my whole emotions, everything wow. changes. I break down. I'm really, really weak. It was only two years ago that I went into 
the UK. I went for treatment and I was just normal. I was like back. So I think um, emotionally it's... Um, and till date, yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. I think about it. You know, it could be when I'm having my devotion, I'm thinking about it and mm. I break down or I see a picture that reminds me of something, mm. you know. So I think the emotional bit kind of like stays... You know, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Williams, you, you said you went through traditional the traditional method. How long did you go through it before you were now in remission? How long did you have to go through that process? About about uh, four years. Four years. Yes, because wow. um, the clinic is in Ikecha, and I lived in Lekki. Mm. I was going every day except Sunday, and um, there's um, a machine called pyro machine that Dr. Toyo, Raymond Toyo uses. Mm. In fact, at the time I went in there, he was the only one that had the machine in Nigeria, among mm. all the uh, uh, alternative practitioners. And that machine, to me, to a very large extent, is responsible for the healing that took place. What does the machine do? What he does is to clear off the dead cells mm. that the cancer has caused in your body. Mm. It takes them off mm. and repairs whatever cells have been damaged. Mm. And I had to pay for three hours to stay on that machine. Wow. Is it a machine you go into, you lie into it? What? No, you, it depends on the type of cancer you have. Mm -hmm. Some sit on it. I was sitting. Mm. Some usually their legs, depending on so how depending on the, the machine is the placed, head. yes. And for the cancer cells to be removed from the breast, I was stage two. But mm. by the time I got to Dr. Toyo, I was already in early stage four. Mm. Wow. And he didn't want to take me on. He said, I'm sorry, ma, you are early stage four. I cannot take you on. What was the period between mm -hmm. stage two and stage four? I mean, how long, how much space in between before you got to stage four? I was just about a year. A year. Wow. I was, already being, I, was already, I was already being treated by another doctor. So what did you ask her? Like, why did it go from stage two to stage four? Were you, weren't you taking so treatment? I was, I was taking treatment. Okay, so I was, in the course of the oh, treatment? I was taking treatment. Okay. I just want to, I was taking treatment. In the course of the treatment, I lost my sister. Okay, you were taking conventional mm -hmm. treatment. Yes, but I didn't start with Dr. Toya. Okay. Okay. I started with another doctor based in Benin. Mm. And I was, I had to be going to Benin, he would come to Lagos, mm. and he put me on a lot of things. Alternative. High stress. In actual fact, interestingly, mm. he trained as an oncologist. Mm. When I went into, ventured into alternative, alternative therapy, therapy, according to him. And that period, a lot of things happened. Mm. I lost my sister mm. to cancer. My late husband fell and broke oh, oh my his God. femur bone. He was in the hospital. So a lot of things and mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. exacerbated it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't like stress. stress. Mm -hmm. It seems like stress plays a major role. Yes, because yes. We yes. read before that yes. Mm -hmm. yes. that stress mm -hmm. does so play a major role. Before I knew it, it, very high it was... Where she just yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before I knew it, I mm -hmm. was early stage four. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Dr. Obasuyi, that was the first doctor. He couldn't handle it, me anymore. Wow. I was dying. Mm. And a friend, a shadow friend of mine flew in from the US. Said, look, Kate is dead. And you, I hear you are mm. suffering from the same things. Mm. Children of the same uh, parents. parents. And my sister actually died in my mother's hands in the US. Oh. So it was like, everybody was keeping it away from my mom. Mm. So he said, I'm here to take you to the US. Mm. He said, I'm not doing chemo. Mm. He said, Potore, look at you, you are dying. I said, it doesn't matter, let me die. Mm. But I know I will not die. That, mm. you, that you won't do chemo? Mm. I, I decided time. from, that, like I said earlier on, from the beginning, oh, okay. when the second when the cancer second was okay. that, I said, I'm not doing it. I'm just going to mm -hmm. follow the pattern of my late husband right. and do alternative. Mm -hmm. So at that point, somehow, I would say by God's divine intervention, Mm -hmm. Somebody introduced me to Dr. Toyo in Lagos. And then he said, you are stage four, mm -hmm. I can't take you. Mm -hmm. wow. But I prayed, I said, Lord, you asked me to do this alternative mm -hmm. medicine. You led me to it. You will give me a cure. Mm -hmm. 
This is my last bus stop. And within 10 minutes of him rejecting me, he accepted me again. I said, okay, let me try, ma. Okay. Wow. There is this thing called panty liner. So What's I said, that? I said, panty liner. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I know what panty liner yeah. is. Yeah. I thought maybe it was a medical. Yeah. So okay. I said, panty liner. I know what panty liner is. I said, what does that got to do with mm -hmm. removing of cancer cells from the oh. breast? And he goes, it's not the ordinary panty liner you... you, you okay, yeah, you yeah, yeah, There's a special one, and he was talking about it. I use that, I will use that to get rid of the cancer cells from your breast. Mm -hmm. This was his panty liner, like, is it like normal panty no, liner? Yes, it's mm -hmm. like normal panty liner, but this is organic and oh, okay. herbal and, you know, medicinal. Oh, wow. It's been produced by Longreach, you know, Longreach International. Have you heard of Longreach International Company in, based in yes. Okwebi? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. They, they, they bring in panty liners. So yeah, now you now start wearing it every day. No, he he actually. So when he talked about it, mm -hmm. a cousin had just introduced Longbridge Company to me and brought the panty liners to my house that same day. Wow. So mm -hmm. I took the panty liner, a carton of it with me when I was going to say, and I said, "Is this what you are talking about?" I said, "Where did you get this from?" I said, "This is produced in Nigeria." Yeah. So that was how he started, mm -hmm. and for a period of one year, he used. The panty liner to wrap my breast. I wasn't wearing bras oh. with bandage, and, and that was how the cancer cells were removed. Non, -ev non invasively. Yeah, Sorry? obviously, it was yeah. not yeah. non invasively. Yeah. That's interesting. And I was on that on the pyro machine for three hours every day, wow. except Sunday. And coupled with all the other things I was using, my diet has changed and everything. So, what kind of things were you eating? Mm -hmm. What kind of things were you drinking? What was what kind of fruits played a major role? In this this, this um, healing process for me carrots red apple um, celery beetroot lemon onions mm. coconut water because to stop the spread he used coconut water I, I drank coconut water twice a day mm. first in the morning then at night for three months and there's this white onions juice i took it for two months to stop the spread mm. and it worked i know do you have something to add to that <laughs> especially the panty liner and the non-invasive <laughs> machine well, you know i can't speak on what i don't know yeah. about you know i, I can't really mm -hmm. speak on it would you have tried for? such a well no method or no such a doctor i remember mm. um a friend coming to see me um, just at that period and referring a doctor, I think he was in um, maybe Maryland or um, that he could do access, you know, saying, um, he came to my mom and I saying we should go there, you know. It was a no-no. I mean, we didn't want to take um, all of those. We, we just, this is what we knew and we decided to go with what we knew, which is the conventional was, medicine. Mm. Diet, yes. Everything about the diet, diet yes. The juicing, yes. the fruit, Absolutely. the feeding, the kind. Of, yes, mm. I did all of that. Coconut water. Yeah. In other words, that means that they can, they, is, there's a way that they can work, they can, can complement each other Appar to a certain extent. Uh, well, uh, apparently, yes, because I did the, the I, I changed my diet and I also went for conventional medicine and I'm sat here 10 years after. Okay, in the course of your healing, have you had, what, what inspired you? What gave you strength? Did you reach out to other people? Are both any of you involved in any forum for cancer survivors? And if you are, can you tell us what kind of experiences you've gone through being a member of such a forum or platform? Yes, I, I've reached out to so many women and that's the reason I, I speak about it. Initially, it was, um, I didn't want to talk, I never used to talk about it. I, I don't think I spoke about my um, cancer survival journey till about five years after. Why? Well... Should I say stigma? I didn't want to be stigmatized. So even when I w had the treatment, nobody knew. It was just my immediate family, not even the people in my office, wow. not even the people in my church. Nobody knew I was ill. I just packed my things, went to the UK and said I was going to school. You know, I just wanted to go through that low moment alone. I didn't need the negativity. You know how you'd say to someone, oh, um, Oh, I have cancer, and they're like, okay, oh, my auntie had it, she died from it. Those mm. were the kind of um, vibes I, I was that. getting, yes, mm. and I didn't want to hear that, you know. So um, I went through it by myself, to, um, you know, just so after I think about. 
four five years i didn't thought about it you know i started to meet other people who were diagnosed and i felt well god has probably <coughs> kept me alive so that mm -hmm. i can give mm -hmm. other people um, inspiration yes and hope you know so i started to reach out to more women speak to so many women in fact last week there's um um an auntie friend of mine who i use um, i buy stuff from and she called to say she had been diagnosed i went to sit with her for her first chemo so that's what i tried to do to other people show them oh look at me i went through the same thing i mean i went through the loss of hair the loss of nails the black tongue the chemo is um a really strong toxic treatment you mm. know chemo is killing the not just the cancer cells it's killing the good cells and that's why it was important to eat well drink a lot of water change um, the diet you know so i use myself to give hopes to other women. That's I've why always, I speak I've about always, it. I've always wondered about chemo as well because I don't know whether it can just also cause infertility amongst women. And if that's the case, whether it's advisable for women to take certain steps before they actually start the chemo. Well, um, I think the, a doctor will speak about that, but it depends. You know, no different people have different cancers. I, I could have um, breast cancer. The next lady to me could have breast cancer, different stages, mm. different prognosis, you know. So um, it depends on um, what it is. There are some cancers that um, you may need to, like, um, you want to, um, what's that thing about your egg? Um, and like save your egg. Yes, you know, you know yeah. and doing that would instigate the cancer Ooh. because it's um it's hormonal so okay. um, I, I feel like um the doctors should be able to speak more about that loss of hair loss of nails yes i lost my hair i was like completely mm -hmm. bald and your nails oh, will go everything black gone it will go black mm -hmm. and then everything will come out oh, every black. hair like hair on my head hair on my hand yeah. lashes yeah. every and at what stage are you recommended to go through chemotherapy and for how the long? Onset now. I think he goes through the For how long the does he? From the onset. Yes, yeah, from the during, onset. Even during early detection. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think um, it okay, depends yeah, on. Some that it depends on. It. It, yeah, mm -hmm. it depends on the stage. Maybe like remember, stage, she yeah. said when she had colon, mm -hmm. you were recommended to do chemo. You know, so I think the doctors, depending on your prognosis. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. that's, yeah. that's probably perhaps stage zero. You know how they yeah. say. The zero is just a, a sign, but it hasn't really right. manifested. But how long does it last? The, the symptoms, like your no hair. Okay, the hair nails. grew back. I think um, probably a year after it started to grow. I mean, my hair is pretty long now. Mm. You know, what you can see of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm. You know, so um, I think um, depending on it grew back within a year, I was mm. um, all back. You know. Well, Mrs. Mm. Williams, in your case, because the side effects, your own side effects were um, loss of hair, loss of whatever. Mm -hmm. In your case, when you were doing the um, traditional or alternative treatments, what were the side effects when the cancer was leaving you your body? Have, you also have a lot of side effects. Like, like what? Please tell us. I, I have, like for me, the, the main thing was I was, of course, you, 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 you're weak. Mm -hmm. Even though you are going through, even if it's alternative therapy, you're very weak. Mm -hmm. And I lost all my premolar tits. Oh, wow. All, all your what? Premolar tits. Premolar, okay, all my premolar wow. tits. All. The first time I lost these ones, the last one I lost all this. Mm. So I have just crowns on my... Okay. And, you, you know, so... And throughout the cancer... Uh, uh, I know it's, it's not easy to treat any other thing when, once you are treating cancer. Mm -hmm. Whether it's conventional, oh, wow. alternative. Yes, it's a bit mm. difficult. Mm. It was difficult for the dentist to walk on okay, my teeth it wow. was very difficult and everybody kept on saying we pray that you heal when you heal mm. so it was in the last one year i actually had my implants on the last mm. set of teeth and mm. it affected my memory as well mm. okay it affected my mem memory a lot mm. you know i was forgetting things to date i still forget a lot of things but i'm just getting back now mm. and then for me in case of um respect of um um forum that mm. one, I think my own life to me mm. is every day is a testimony that I'm alive. Is a testimony. Yeah. Absolutely. So I everywhere I go. How long have you been in remission absolutely. now? Uh, maybe about two two years, two two to oh, three years now. Mm. And everywhere I go, I see myself. I I never hid it. I never hid the fact mm. that I had cancer. Mm. Mm. I never did. Mm. And as I started getting better, a, a lot of people work calling me from all over oh, the globe. So yeah, almost I like was like a reference it. point mm. yeah. that somebody had this cancer, doing That's it alternative way, mm. and she's healing, mm. she's getting better. 
too dead. People still call me. Okay. So I talked to a lot of cancer patients. I even treated one or two on my own because okay. they didn't have the means okay. to go conventional Thank way. You so much, mm. you know. Okay, so, we seem to story. we seem to have Dupe now. I mean, she's come quite late, but you know, at least let, Dupe, let's just ask you one or two questions before the end of the show. So, Dupe Lebute Odusi is the co-founder and CEO of Marcel Ruth Center, Cancer Center, and Specialist Hospital in Lagos. Welcome to Perspectives, Dupe. Sorry to have had you so so late. So let's start with the first question. Although the causes of breast cancer are still unknown, what factors may increase a woman's chances of getting the disease? And can women lower these chances? And also how I can't hear her. Can you hear me, Dukwe? Can you hear me now? Okay, we can, I think we've lost Dukwe, Dukwe, Dukwe for, for a minute. But it's good to know, uh, Mrs. Ore Williams, that you are a strong advocate for alternative medicine. But I think at the same time, too, you know, I'm in two minds because I also feel that conventional medicine is necessary to a certain extent. The, do the average doctor will tell you that conventional is the way forward. So maybe just, mm -hmm. let's just say your approach is a bit more... Right. I, I think my approach is an exceptional case. Yes, yes, is, yes. I'm not into conventional medicine at all. Like, I don't take Panadol, I don't take... I love that. I don't, I just, you know, because my body like is so too. immune to mm -hmm. natural uh, therapies and treatments. That's because mm -hmm. ever since you started this process, yeah. you stopped taking any No, I'm not into, I don't have a dick, I don't mm -hmm. have migraine anymore. I oh, don't. You that's know, interesting. You know, mm -hmm. um, no malaria parasites okay, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, in my body, nothing. Mm -hmm. Because I'm very, very, very disciplined. I like about that. my diet and you know what I take. You yes, know, yes, you know when we spoke earlier, um, because I'd n I've never, I've always had alternative, never met anyone who's um, used alternative and has survived. So it was good to. So this is the first time. Her. This is the first time. Somebody. Yes, you know. And mm -hmm. the question I asked was, um, how many people have did you refer and um, went through this same the thing? You know, uh -huh, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, her response was they were you were 13 unfortunately that was initially at the, yes, that was at the when, when she going started the treatment, you yes. know that the the 12 people didn't make it you know mm. and i mean that would have really frightened me mm -hmm. you know they didn't so, make mm -hmm. it because uh -huh. they had gone into conventional mm -hmm. therapy it didn't work for them but the all therapy is that therapies. successful why is it not more popular People don't know. Oh, Education and knowledge is power. Like I would have thought earlier. that more people would be curious about it. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think it's people are beginning to know about it now. Yeah, they are. Yeah. There's widespread yeah. information going yes. around. Yes. Yes. But of I course, guess, the guess, industry still wants to make money. So Exactly. <laughs> you will so I guess got to find a balance. Is Dupe here? Because we seem to be having an issue with getting Dupe. But I'm here. Okay, Dupe, I'm here, but I can't okay. hear. There's a lot of noise. I can I'm, Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, we don't have that I much time. I can hear you now. We don't yes. have that much time left. Yes. So I'm just going to ask you one major question. What are the signs? What are the warning signs? Okay. Can you hear me? What are the warning signs to watch out for if you are thinking about using any method instead of standard evidence-based medical treatment? What is the shortcoming of CAM as compared to conventional medicine? And what is the biggest problem with complementary and alternative medicine? If you can just please give us a quick answer on, on, on those three questions. Okay. Good morning, and thank you for having me um, on Arise TV this morning on this uh, month of uh, October Breast Cancer Awareness. Um, as you know, I'm a, a, a hematology oncologist by training, um, and so obviously most of my experience is on conventional methods of treating breast cancer together with my oncology colleagues. Um, you know, I'm, so Ruth, we've treated over 3,000 patients now, of which we've treated about 500 breast cancer patients. And clearly the route to treatment includes a number of things, including chemotherapy, surgery and radiotherapy, where they've been very well formed guidelines, international guidelines that have been put together over years. Um, to help to determine the best way of treating breast cancer. and. You know, the science has evolved and is changing. And with science now, we use things like whether the patients are hormone receptor positive to introduce new um, immunology type treatments which have less side effects than chemotherapy. So the conventional treatments are solid in terms of large numbers of patients have been treated with results that are very, very clear. Um, and now, as I said, more um, opportunities to look at better ways of improving 
the survival and the outcomes of patients while trying to reduce the toxicity and side effects of drugs. Now, when it comes to alternative treatments, from my understanding, they vary um, in terms of what is used, in terms of the protocols, in terms of the dose, whereas with conventional treatments, it's very, very clear. The treatment that you would get, as long as they're keeping to the guidelines, in Lagos will be exactly the same as in the US or in the UK or anywhere else in the world. Um, with alternative treatments, it's a bit difficult to assess how to compare because they really do vary. Um, so, and of course, that's not my um, line of, of um, training, um, but I'm yet to see any patient who will say that they've been completely cleared of treatment um, from just alternative treatments. I think what I would like to say is that, of course, people have their own strong cultural beliefs, um, religious beliefs, uh, and maybe even these um, alternative therapies. But okay. I would like to implore that everything is done alongside what the doctors are okay doing. thank you but we have to cut off so soon because um unfortunately you, um, you didn't come in early enough but i think you have made your point thank you for being with us here today on perspectives thank you mrs Ori williams for being with us thank you and our SEN for being with us and thank you for your inspirational stories absolutely you great know, having you both that's what we have to chat today thank you so unfortunately i can't read my closing comments because i think we run out of time mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll see you again next week thank you for being here with us on perspectives see you next week <laughs>